This problem applies the integration techniques, integration by parts, and substitution. It also illustrates how a change of variable and endpoints transforms one integral to another integral. We are to prove part A and use it to evaluate the integral in part B. Let's start with part A. By observation, the format of the statement looks like something that comes out of integration by parts. U is repeated here and differentiated here. We notice that sine x to the power n minus 1 is an appropriate u because there seems to be a form of the derivatives here. So let's rewrite the expression. We let sine x to the power n minus 1 be u and sine x dx to dv. Applying the integration by parts formula, we have u v, which is the integral of sine x, minus v du, which differentiates sine x to the power n minus 1, which is n minus 1, sine x to the power n minus 2, and then differentiating sine x, we get cosine x. Simplifying, we get now cosine squared x is 1 minus sine squared x from the Pythagorean identity sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals to 1. Simplifying again, we have 1 times sine x to the power n minus 2 is And sine x squared times sine x to the power n minus 2 is sine x to the power n. Notice that the integral of sine x to the power n appears here and here. So we can gather them to one side so that 1 plus brackets n minus 1 is equal to n copies of integral of sine x to the power n. Dividing both sides by n, we have the statement as required. Part B gives a hint. Find this integral, then find this. From part A, we have this statement so that we will replace n by 2n plus 1. We get next we put in the endpoints. Simplifying, we get and since this is 2n minus 1, we can repeat the process and replace n in part A formula by 2n minus 1. Next, we simplify it again. If we keep going, we get this.
this can be found to be 1. So this becomes the product of even numbers up to the 2n term divide the product of odd numbers up to 2n plus 1 term. So the first integral is this. And the second integral is equivalent to simply by changing the variable x to u. By observation, sine x seems to have a relation to u. Let's see what happens when we make the substitution u equals sine x. We have replaced this part by this part. Next, let's look at dx. Differentiating u, we get cosine x, which is also square root of 1 minus u squared. Therefore, 1 over square root 1 minus u squared du is equal to dx. So we can replace dx by 1 over square root 1 minus u squared du. Notice we haven't put in the endpoints. When x is equal to 0, u is 0. So we can replace the lower endpoint here by 0. On the other hand, when x is equal to pi over 2, u is equal to 1. So pi over 2 is replaced by 1. Notice that these two highlighted integrals are equivalent. Therefore, we can make the conclusion that this integral is equal to the first integral